are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Benevolent Father, like the prodigal son, I return to you and say, I have sinned against you and am no longer worthy to be called your child. Christ Jesus, Savior of the world, I pray with a repentant thief, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Holy Spirit, fountain of love, I call on you in trust. Purify my heart and empower me to walk as a child of light. God the Father has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son. And for the sake of Jesus' suffering, grants you pardon and absolves you of all your sins, heals and strengthens you, and raises you to new life. Receive his grace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Song. Yes. Our next song will be Lord I Left Your Name on High, which is number so you can sit if you want. 17. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And Heather's going to stand up here in the front. You said you're going to stand up here in the I didn't say I was going to stand up there. I said I was going to help you. Okay, well, I'm going to help your being now. All right. David. David.
So where do I sit? Right where the broken is. You sit on this side of the table. Sit on this side of the table. Sit on this side of the table. I hear you. I know, but you're going to sit there and complain instead. <laughs> You have done nothing but pick on me the last couple weeks. <laughs> because I love you. You always hurt the one you <laughs> All right, I'm here now. Feel better? Yeah, it hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> Let's not go there. Oh, oh Lord. Give you me are the treasured people of Yahweh. <laughs> people holy to Yahweh, to Yahweh our God. God. Place his word on your hearts, get it deep inside you. Discuss it wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about it from the time you get up in the morning until you fall into bed at night. For faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of Yahweh. Let us pray. Oh God, mighty and immortal. You know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. It's your turn. lesson is from Isaiah chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not by going your own way, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs. Then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 103 <coughs> responsibly. Bless, O Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. Who made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 12. You have not come to something that can be touched a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and to the innumerable angels in festival gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous in person, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to 
the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the gospel acclamation. Word of life, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, all glory to you. Our hearts burn within us when you open up the scriptures for us. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to, to give it water? And ought not this woman, the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm not going to preach on Hebrews, but I'm going to appeal to the James Bond fans. Do we have James Bond fans here? I always want to preach on this lesson on Hebrews, but I will someday. Just so you heard the writer of Hebrews say, we have, a, we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, right? And it's calling us to action. I always want to preach a sermon just so I can name it. Stirred, not shaken. <laughs> but not today. You don't get that one today. Today we're going to talk about the gospel because, yeah. What's going on in this gospel today? Did you notice? Lori noticed. What did you notice, Lori? I noticed that Jesus was preaching on a Sabbath day, which went against the law. Preaching, is it? Well, working. Healing. Healing, okay. They were upset because he was healing. And that's the why they were so upset. Yes. Yes. Uh, I always like to count in Luke when there's a story like this, where Jesus is teaching us what's the difference between law and people. I always like to count how many times Jesus broke the law. How many times did Jesus break the law in this story? Did you count them? No. Well, we know one because he healed on the Sabbath, right? He talked to a woman. There's one. He talked, he talked to a woman who is not his mother, his wife, or his sister in public. 
and they considered her unclean. You what? Did they not consider her unclean because she was crippled and and, and, and she yeah. was in the temple. They're not in the temple. They're in the synagogue. In the synagogue. Okay, but you're on the right track. So there's one. No, he touched her. He touched her. A, she's unclean. And B, she's a woman who is not his mother, his wife, or his sister. And he touched her in public. So there's three. And then he had the audacity to heal her. There's four. Um, he told her her ailment. She was free from her ailment. Only God can do that. There's five. Five. In the first half of the story, Jesus breaks the law five times. And then the leader of the synagogue, and I love that Luke says, he kept saying. It's not like he said this once. He kept saying. And you want to know how I picture him in my head? You probably don't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Here's how I picture this little synagogue leader, because I imagine that he's little. <laughs> Danny DeVito in Matilda with his hat glued to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Running around going, <clears throat> Just say it over and over like that, running around the middle circle. That's how I picture that. And Jesus says, seriously, did you feed your animals today? Did you? Did you take your 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 donkey? I miss King James. Did you take <laughs> your ox and your ass out to give them water? Did you? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Was that working on Sabbath? But, but, but you're allowed to do that. Yeah, you are. You are. You're allowed to do that. You're also allowed to uh, save a life on the Sabbath. Oddly, if you're an Orthodox Jew, and I know trivial pursuit here, but this just always strikes me as odd. You're allowed absolutely to save the life of a fellow Jew on the Sabbath. A Gentile, you get the pick if you want to or not. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus says, all right, so you can take care of your animals. But here's this woman who is a sibling to you, a daughter of Abraham, who has been harassed by Satan for 18 years. And you're going to say to me, well, you're not even talking to me. You're yelling at them, and they didn't do anything. You're going to say that's wrong. Seriously. And let's think about what Jesus did for this woman. Because we see in the story that he healed her from this ailment, right? She stood up straight. But let's think about the predicament of this woman. She's bent over. I had an uncle. Y'all remember my aunt who lived to be 104? Yep. Her brother, Raleigh, Uncle Raleigh. He had arthritis in his spine so bad. He was bent over. I mean, like this, all the time. He stood like this. And he sat like that, and he did everything like that. He had to sleep on his side, obviously, because he couldn't move his spine at all. That's this woman. 18 years of that. I think Uncle Raul was like 30 years of that, but you know, it's not a competition. 18 years of that. <laughs> but I know what that like for a person. What does this woman see? She sees the ground. She can't see her friends. She can't see her family. She can't see the stars at night. She can't, I mean, she, here's how, because this is what Uncle Raul would do. If you wanted to talk to him, you had to be where Barb was, so he could do that. And not too long, because it hurt his neck. This is how she's been living for 18 years. Here's what she cannot do besides that. She can't help her family. I mean, I said this sporting banker, 
she couldn't help around the house, and then I thought, well, she could probably sweep the floor really good because she can see where all the dirt was. But beyond that, <laughs> she couldn't help cook, she couldn't do the laundry, she couldn't help if she has kids and grandkids, she couldn't help with them, she couldn't do anything at the house. She could not go into the temple, as Lori pointed out. And what happens if you can't go into the temple? Yes, who said that? Rather. Sticker. You, you can't receive absolution. You can't take sacrifice for your sin. You cannot get rid of your sin if you can't go into the temple. Because that doesn't happen in the synagogue. You have to go to the temple for that and bring your sacrifice. She can't do that, and people can't do it for her. She can't go there on Yom Kippur. She can't go there at Passover. She can't go there at all because she has an imperfect body. So Jesus, being Jesus, healing her physical self is incidental to what he's really doing. Jesus is all about restoring people to community. I don't know, anybody, any of you ever meet Jesus? <laughs> Talk to him, you know, listen to what he has to say. That's what he's all about, isn't it? His whole reason, the whole reason God became man in the person of Jesus Christ was by his life, death, resurrection, ascension, and sending of the Holy Spirit to restore us to our proper community, which is the kingdom of God. To restore us to that right and real relationship with God and with each other so that we can live as authentic human beings. Live the life we were created to live. And when Jesus is doing these things in Scripture, that's what he's doing for these individual people because he's revealing his Father's heart. He's saying, this is what I'm here for. I'm doing it for this lady right now. I came to do it for everybody. I mean, think about it. She stood up. Jesus touched her. I'm sure everybody went, <laughs> when he did that. But Jesus touched her, and she just sprang up. Like those, like those things in front of the used car dealership. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a snake from a peanut brittle can. I was thinking a jack in the box. <laughs> Think about the, the whatever that is, the inflatable man, whatever he's called. Isn't that what he does? She sprang up and praised God. Exactly. Ah, she sprang up and praised God. That's exactly what happened. And then what could she do? Everything. She could go home and hug her family. She could go home, unless they were already there with her, but she could hug. Can you imagine if I could hug anybody for 18 years? I mean, the pandemic almost killed me. <laughs> 18 years she hasn't been able to hug people. She can hold babies. She can play with the dog. She can bake bread. She can work in the garden. She can go for a walk. She can go to the temple. She can bring her sacrifice and receive absolution and live free. Jesus has, yeah, he cured her body, but he has restored her to her community so that she can live the life she was created to live. And what people say about that, don't come here on the Sabbath to be cured. So, oh my God. Here's Jesus. Oh my me. <laughs> Seriously, that's all you can think about right now is you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day? I am so glad that 
our society isn't like that. I can't even say that with a straight face. That we don't take the law and the Bible and weaponize them and use them to beat up other people, do we? No. Or to build walls or to say who's in and who's out. We would never do that, would we? <coughs> yeah, like every day. I found this thing. I'm going to read it to you because, you know, I have no memory. I found this thing yesterday. I put it on my Facebook page, and as usual... When I put stupid, idiotic stuff on there, I get nine million people, oh, this is weird. I put something profound and I get crickets. <laughs> but that's okay. I put it there. Listen to this. This is, this is intensely profound. Okay, so now the internet's not working. <laughs> oh, there we go. Listen to this. Genocide is biblical. Loving your enemy is biblical. Only one is Christ-like. Slavery is biblical. Chain-breaking is biblical. Only one is Christ-like. Patriarchy is biblical. Countercultural elevation of women is biblical. Only one is Christ-like. Retributive violence is biblical. Grace-filled filled, grace -filled restoration is biblical. But only one is Christ-like. Segregation is biblical. Unity is biblical. But only one is Christ-like. Christ transforms, not the Bible. Be wary of those who know one, but not the other. I mean, that's what I should have just said that and said amen. amen. Yeah. I mean, that is so profound. And that's what the church at the moment has forgotten. And I would just say this about our beloved denomination, the ELCA, has not forgotten that. They do a lot of good things. What they don't do is do it out loud. I mean, all the inclusivity in the ELCA, all the fighting for justice, on, on all fronts, all of the work that the ELCA does, interfaith, interdenominationally, it's fantastic. They just had a mass apology at the church-wide to indigenous people for the, the role in the church in destroying <coughs> their society and sought reconciliation. But they don't do it out loud. So guess what I'm going to ask us to do? Go ahead, guess. We need to do it out loud. You know who does it out loud really well is the Episcopal Church. They are all over the place, all over social media, all over, in print, everywhere, proclaiming this justice of Jesus. Just flaunting it in people's faces with the greatest amount of love they can possibly have for everybody. And they do it out loud, and we need to do it out loud. We're good at it. And you know, Lutherans, right? Oh, we don't want anybody to do this. See ya. <laughs> we need to get over that. The world needs to see what real Christ like behavior looks like. It doesn't look like the evangelicals. Just saying. And by the way, also at the church wide assembly, I disagree with this, but I'm just a dumb country pastor. What do I know? They have started thinking about taking evangelical out of our name precisely for that reason. So that our denomination is not compared with or attached to in any way evangelical. I think they should do the opposite and loudly proclaim evangelical means gospel. Here's what we're doing that follows the gospel. But you know, that's, like I said, that's just my number. But Jesus clearly is calling us to two things today. I know that's four. Two things today. 
One is to recognize in our own self where Jesus has come to us. <coughs> and notice that too about this lady. She did not go to Jesus. She didn't walk in there looking for healing. She didn't send her friends over like people often do and say, see if Jesus will come heal me. She did none of that. She walked in the building. Right? And Jesus said, all right, come here. I don't know if she even knew his voice. I'm sure she was hesitant. Why is some guy I can't see talking to me? Come here, lady. <laughs> and she shuffles over, and then he touches her. I'm sure part of her straightening up was surprise. <laughs> but Jesus went to her. She didn't ask. She didn't, he didn't wait for her to ask. He didn't say, do you want to be healed, like he does sometimes. He just did it, because that's what she needed. There she was. He could do it. He did it. Jesus is asking us today to look at our lives and see where he did that for us. And he does it more than once. He's going to do it in a minute, in a really profound way. But he does it all the time for us. And gives us what we need to live that authentic human life that we are created to live and stamped with the image of God to live. And the second thing he's asking us to do is to do that, to do what Jesus did. When somebody is right there in front of us and needs something, needs to be freed from something, needs help, needs a hug, whatever, and they're right there and you can do it, do it. And if there are 5,000 laws that say you can't do that right now, here's what you do with the law. Punt it away. People always come first. Always. <coughs> Restoring people to their proper community is always the aim. Making sure nobody is alone in this world is always the goal. Bringing people into the kingdom of God is always what the church is about. And if there's a law, a God law, or a human law that says, oh, you can't do that. Boom. Sorry, I'm doing it anyway. Out loud. <laughs> Because when you do it out loud, it encourages other people to do it. Plus, it helps other people who only see a side of Jesus, we, a wrong portrayal of Jesus, I should say, to see who Jesus actually is. To see what Jesus is really about. To do what Jesus came to do, and which is now the church's task, to reveal our Father's heart. Now, what's our Father's heart? Well, there you go. Heather's on a two-sticker day. <laughs> because God is love, right? God is love. So that's all that could possibly be in our Father's heart is love. That's all. So, there you go. Go do that. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> we gather. We are nourished, we are encouraged by God's word, and we are fed by his body and blood to do exactly that. And all of it coming out of the gratitude we have for what Jesus has done for us. Okay? Okay? Okay. Amen. 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 Our sermon hymn will be All in All, which is number, anyone? 38. 38. <laughs> Sing nice and loud, because Heather's not going to stand up here and lead the same. <laughs> what did I just say? I was going to say, did you not hear the word love? <laughs> Excuse me, teacher's pet. <laughs> we had a rough morning. <laughs> Thank you.
Please rise and join Mark in the offertory. Nurture and care that we may share your divine life 
with the world through our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. You sent the Son, our Lord Jesus, to accomplish our redemption, freeing us from the yoke of slavery to sin and death, and making us a royal priesthood to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. Therefore, with angels and archangels, the church militant and the church triumphant, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, of and in the eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, of and in the highest. Holy are you, O Lord, our God. You are indeed holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. With incomprehensible love for our fallen world, you gave the only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. On the night before his death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. Again, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we joyfully await his coming in glory. And we ask, Stir up your Holy Spirit, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his holy supper. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In obedience to Jesus' divine teaching, we are bold to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is Jesus. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those he calls to his supper. Wow. 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please join Bart in the post-communion hymn. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, creator of the universe, just and true are your ways, ruler of the nations, who you give the honor of your Lord and sing the glory of your name. You alone are holy, and all creation worships your majesty. Salvation belongs to our God, and to Christ the Lamb, forever and ever. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the Holy Eucharist, you give us yourself, and equip us to bear fruit in your everyday lives. <coughs> give us the courage to be Christ-bearers for the world's sake willing to live for others, and eager to see and serve you in everyone we need. We ask this by the Spirit's power, and in your sacred name. Amen. Amen. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. Amen. May our faithful Lord empower you to live in harmony with one another, and in unity with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. May our God of hope fill you with joy and serenity in believing that you may abound in trust by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in his peace. Amen. Okay, well, before our final hymn, uh, we are going to sing, I Believe, which... I believe is number 12, correct? Yes. And before we do that, though, I just wanted to thank Caitlin for playing today. I think this is the first time she's played her guitar in four years. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, so, Caitlin. Yeah. And, and she hates to be made the center of <laughs> Whatever you do, do not recognize her. <laughs> oh, Good, and let's say this to them. In light of that, I think this is the first time that I know of that we've had a doctor playing the guitar for us in worship. Wow. <laughs> well, you're having a great day. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.